there is a decrease in the number of the official poor by almost 500,000 uh, from around 1.3 million persons in 2012-13. Uh, this decrease is uh, correlatable, in my view, to the increase in income of the poorest 20% of households. Their incomes have risen by 40% uh, in 2016 in comparison to 2012-13. So what the data tells us is that um, Ceteris Paribus, when incomes rise, uh, poverty falls. Now also, according to the latest uh, HIES data, Sri Lanka is a less unequal society in 2016 than it was in 2012-13. The Gini ratio has improved in the direction of equality by 0.03%. Presumably, the 10,000 rupee public sector wage hike in 2015 uh, boosted the wages of many uh, in the 60% of households sandwiched between the top and bottom 20%. But the Gini coefficient is an average across regions, genders, and ethnicities. Unsurprisingly, it is worst among urban households where the numerical concentration of the richest 20% of households is highest and their conspicuous consumption the greatest. The disaggregated data tells us that the richest 20% of households account for over 50% of all household income and the poorest 20% under 5%. Uh, or in other words, the average income of the top 20% in society is 10 times that of the bottom 20%. In my view, this is uh, dangerous and uh, self-destructive um, for any um, sustainable uh, economic uh, model. To me, it defies what one sees, hears, and reads, it defies belief that um, only around 840,000 people from a population of 21 million in Sri Lanka are poor. The current measurement of poverty, in my view, is intended to be a good news story following each round of the Household Income and Expenditure Survey. An official poverty line that determines any person whose monthly expenditure is greater than 4,166 rupees a month is not poor is absurd in the Sri Lankan context in 2017. Were the value of the poverty line to be increased by only 400 rupees a month, which is less than a cup of coffee of that myself and those of you who are listening or watching would usually pay, uh, it would increase the number of the official poor by uh, several hundred thousands to over 1.25 million people. In other words, it's not very different from the 2012-2013 figure. Can the narrowing of inequality be, in, be sustained and accelerated? Uh, in my view, this is doubtful as the real value of household income is whittled away by inflation which was 8.6% in September and 7.9% in August. The, 20, the figures uh, in the, in, from the next round will be revealing in that respect. In any case, I believe any income inequality is to be far greater than the data indicates, as we have no accurate knowledge of the sources of income and therefore actual income and wealth of the 1%. In conclusion, I believe most people, and especially the poor, don't understand poverty and inequality through statistical measures, but rather interpret it through their lived experiences. In class societies where the distribution of wealth and power is skewed in favor of a numerical minority, poverty and inequality are not absolutes, nor reducible to income. Rather, to be poor and to feel unequal is always relative and not entirely tangible. 
poverty and inequality are always experienced in relation to something and someone or some others, be it in one's extended family or locality or farther away. One question I have is whether some women's understandings of these concepts differ from those of men, and if so, in what respects.